Shark season is in full swing on Cape Cod, so tonight we are taking a deep dive into the species. Good evening, everyone. I'm JC Monahan. And I'm Glenn Jones. Sharks, like people, flock to the Cape annually at this time of year. Just in the last week alone, there have been a number of sharks spotted on the Cape and islands. Sightings are reported to the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's Sharktivity app. As you can see, the sharks are being spotted near many of the Cape's most popular beaches. Okay, so with all these sharks swimming around, beachgoers may have a lot of questions. They may have a lot of concerns. And they start to hear that music in their head. <laughs> we begin tonight with a closer look at how researchers are responding to some of those concerns. Camera tag systems, drones, and other tracking devices are giving scientists on the Cape a shark's eye view of how they operate. We've got drones, we've got newer technologies that give us a sense of what these animals are doing every second of their day. Researchers say the great white population has made a comeback since they became a prohibited species in 1997. Cape Cod is now a white shark hotspot. They're all here because they, they all smell this, this great It's a good fish. restaurant. It's a good restaurant. The Cape's growing seal population drew the season's first great white off the coast of Nantucket in early May, but that's not the only only dish on the menu. Over the past few years, we've had increasing reports of white sharks stealing people's fish as they're reeling it in, because from a shark's perspective, it's a free snack. Scientists say people are not their choice of prey. We firmly believe, as much of the scientific community believes, is that when a white shark bites a person, it is likely a mistake. A shark bit and killed 26-year-old Arthur Medici in 2018 while he was boogie boarding in Wellfleet. It was the first attack on the Cape in more than 80 years. Anytime this happens, even though it's a statistically very rare event, there's huge blowback because it incites fear. People are nervous about entering the water, and it feeds right into all those myths we have about sharks. We are joined now by Dr. Megan Winton from the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. Megan, I know NBC10, we spoke with you at the start of shark season. How is the season shaping up so far, and has there been a lot of activity in the water? Hi, thanks so much for having me. Um, you know, this season has been a little slow to start compared to years past. We have had a few sightings of great white sharks off of our coast, um, but activity seems to be a little, a little slow to start this year. Um, but to be fair, we haven't conducted a lot of research trips to date yet. We're still really focused on getting some equipment in the water that we haven't been able to yet for logistical reasons. But it's safe to assume that there are definitely sharks around, um, but we should see activity continue to increase into the summer, um, and it generally peaks in late summer in August and early fall, September and October. Well, based on the data that you guys have been sharing over the last few years, we know you and your colleagues in conservation have been really affected at growing the population of white sharks. How do you then balance that with public safety concerns? Because I'm assuming more sharks equates to more humans interacting with sharks. This is a really long-lived, slow-growing species. They get to be over 70 years old. They don't start having babies until they're in their 20s or 30s. And so it's taken this long for the population to make a comeback. And part of the reason why Cape Cod is so popular for this recovering population now is that the seal population has also made a comeback. And white sharks don't only eat seals, but it is one of their favorite foods. And so the concentration of seals here off of Cape Cod draws white sharks in every summer and fall once the water temperature warms up and the white sharks can be here. Um, and so part of that is we really want to let people know what these sharks are doing, right? Because they didn't used to come this close to shore off of Cape Cod, and now there are more sharks out there. And so it's been a period of really rapid change for our community, and our job as scientists and educators is to let people know not only that the sharks are back, this is a conservation success story in terms of both sharks and seals, but we also want people to know what they're doing. So we're using the latest and greatest in shark spy technology technology to study the movements and behaviors, and in particular, the predatory behavior of white sharks in the waters off of our coastline. And we are getting that information into the hands of the public as quickly as we can generate it, because we want everybody to know what we know about these sharks and what they're getting up to in the waters off of our beaches. And to that point, you talked about getting technology back in the water, still in the process. You have drones, you tag some sharks as well. How much of a game changer is it for you in how you study sharks, but also for the public here in terms of understanding them? 
It's an incredibly exciting time to be a scientist. We now have drones, as you mentioned. We also have camera tags that we attach to sharks, and they essentially allow us to ride on the back of a great white shark and see everything it does for hours. Those tags also record an immense amount of data. They record everything that shark is doing and information about its environment 20 times a second. So we're generating massive amounts of data about these animals and, and their movements in our waters. And the drones have been an incredible tool as well. They've been a transformative technology. But one thing all these new technologies have been really great at as well is outreach. Because it's one thing for me as a scientist to stand up and show you a bunch of graphs and figures and plots about what these animals are doing or might be doing. But it's so much more powerful to be able to show you and to be able to show people how close to shore white sharks are coming, how close to shore white sharks are hunting for seals. But it also gives people an understanding of what these animals are instead of what they're not. But what's been so cool about some of these technologies that we're applying, the camera tags and particular is we're able to see exactly what these sharks are doing when they're out there. We've seen sharks get scared. We've seen birds dive in the water next to them and they freak out and they're like, oh my gosh, what was that? We've seen them check things out. They're actually very curious fish and they're very cautious, selective predators. So these have also gone a long way in transforming not only our understanding of these animals from a scientific perspective, but also the public's understanding of these animals. And I think most people are fascinated with sharks, whether they're afraid of them or really into them um, the way we are as scientists. So it, it's been amazing to have all this technology at our disposal. Totally agree. Yeah. So totally Dr. Agree. Woodson, uh, you, you, you mentioned this great percentage increase in the population. And you talked about how long a great white shark can live. Can 70. You give us, yeah. Can you give <laughs> us a top line number on what you think the population is now in our region of the Atlantic Ocean and how long that number might be with us? Oh, that's such a great question. It's one of the questions we get asked most frequently, and it was a big part of my PhD work. So from 2015 to 2018, we conducted a really intensive survey off the coast of Cape Cod where we were cataloging great white sharks to come up with a number, to come up with an estimate of how many great whites had come to the waters off of Cape Cod in that time period. So we estimated that from 2015 to 2018, 800 white sharks came here at some point. They weren't here all at once. I don't wanna incite panic, but over that four year period, we estimated 800 gray white sharks came to the waters off of Cape Cod. And so what that represents is a minimum number for the population in the Northwest Atlantic. But we know that more are out there and the population does seem to be recovering. So getting that absolute number for that entire population is, is a big open question in white shark science right now. Dr. Megan Winton, you have been amazing with all this information. You're from the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. Thank you for what you do. And of course, thanks for joining us and helping us understand the great white shark a little bit better. Thanks so much for having me. Always happy to talk about sharks, obviously, clearly. Okay, we want to talk more sharks now making their way to Cape Cod every summer. And it's all because of the warmer waters. First alert meteorologist Pete Bouchard joins us now to explain that part of this puzzle. That's right. They like the seals, obviously, as a food source and also the milder temperatures offshore. Now we've climbed back up into the 60s. Look at this. Some of these buoy reports are in the upper 60s. Cape Cod Bay is 64, but the south part of Cape Cod, the southern shore of Cape Cod and around Woods Hole, it's close to 70 degrees as the Gulf Stream brings up those milder water temperatures, even off Nantucket, 71 degrees. So sharks complete their migration by now, late June. They're most concentrated through October. And then after that, they do start heading south. No hard evidence that the overall global population is increasing, but the fact that you have the food source here in New England may attract more sharks in this direction. We join some hot spots, and these are incredible, right? I did a little research on the California, Mexico, and Australia for global hot spots overall, and that's saying something, right? Because you think the great whites of California are always there, but now they're here, and so we'll have to be mindful of it. And they are federally protected, too, near shore, so keep that in mind.
It's quite a list. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> With sharks being a common sight on the Cape this time of year, it's important for beachgoers to be safe. So the Cape Cod National Seashore has a number of schmar <laughs> shark <laughs> smart <laughs> tips. Whoever wrote that, you're killing me. Beachgoers <laughs> are urged to do the following. Be aware. That's because sharks hunt for seals in the shallow water. Stay close to shore so rescuers can get to you. Don't isolate your yourself, so make sure to swim, paddle, kayak, surf in groups. Groups. Avoid areas, as we heard, where seals are present. Avoid areas where schools of fish are visible. Avoid murky or low visibility water. Limit splashing and follow all signage and flag warnings at beaches. Got it? Got it. Good. Great white sharks have that notorious reputation, though, for a number of reasons. But as our Monica Medea reports, the species is incredibly important for one big reason. Massachusetts' most notorious predator is key to a healthy ocean ecosystem. That according to a researcher who just wrapped up 20 years of studying white sharks in South Africa. Having top predators like great whites that help keep the balance. The Nova Scotia-based scientist, part of a team documenting what became the decline and eventual disappearance of great white sharks in Falls Bay, South Africa, the last sighting in 2018. This is where great whites are breaching out of the water, and, like, it was famous. Those waters are now taken over by seal and seven-gill sharks, disrupting the food chain. As a result, we then saw the things that, that the seals and the seven-gill sharks like to eat. Uh, sightings of those species declined in our underwater surveys. He blames the loss of the apex predator in South Africa to a number of factors, including netting to keep sharks away from beaches. There is a source of mortality um, that might be, you know, cumulative from, from human impacts. Here along the Massachusetts coast, the species is healthy, with sightings not uncommon. I did catch a shark. Last September, young white sharks were in shallow waters off Crane Beach in Ipswich, the water off limits for a time. A scary situation, but Hammerschlag, who works with researchers at Cape Cod's Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, says it's a sign of a healthy ocean. Well, I think that we are getting, you know, closer to what the historical numbers of, of great whites were. I don't think we're, we're at that level yet, but I think we're getting close. And, you know, nature figures itself out. If you leave it alone, it figures itself out. That was Monica Medea reporting. Jaws has come to life a couple of times here in southern New England in recent weeks. First, a 20-foot-long basking shark was caught on camera off Block Island back in late May. There was another close encounter the other day off the coast of New Hampshire. A few massive basking sharks crashed a bachelorette party around the Isle of Shoals. And that close encounter was a case of life imitating art for those on that bachelorette cruise. Our Mary Marco spoke with them about this jaw-dropping moment. 50 years ago, the movie Jaws made millions of people think twice about even putting a toe in the water. And on this very boat, a bachelorette party found themselves starring in their very own real-life sequel. Holy... Oh my God. That is the biggest shark I've ever seen. A jaw-dropping surprise for a bride on her bachelorette. Terrifying. Yeah. I'm hearing great white. <laughs> I'm hearing thrasher. I'm hearing a basking shark. And honestly, they all mean the same thing to me. A shark's a shark. So I was... Morgan Iron's future sister-in-law, Colby Taylor, assured her that the plan was to cruise around the Isle of Shoals looking for whales. My dad's been a lobsterman his whole life. I've always been on the boat. I've never seen a shark in these waters. You have nothing to be worried about. All the gals were out back having a fun time, and all of a sudden we hear Colby scream. Colby goes, I see a fin, and we all look, and everybody's like, oh, no, that's a bird, that's a sunfish, and she's like, no, that's a fin, and my heart starts racing. The bride's last sail before the veil quickly turned into a scene right out of Jaws on the movie's 50th anniversary. We were quoting Jaws going out into the ocean, so maybe we manifested the sharks. I'm not sure we meant to. Morgan hid in the back of the boat as Colby cast captured not one, but two sharks on camera about 15 miles offshore. It looked like prehistoric, like yeah. a dinosaur coming out from underneath. It was just this massive, massive body. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy confirmed these are basking sharks. The second largest species can grow as big as the 42-foot boat they were on. To be honest, that's the biggest, biggest basking shark I've ever seen. It was like 25 or 30 feet. It was the topic of conversation for the rest of the night was the sharks. Yeah. Definitely a day I will never forget, that is for <laughs> sure.
25 foot shark. <laughs> that My was goodness. cool though that they got to see that. I mean, they were safe. They're on the boat. Yeah, you're right. They'll talk about it for a long time. That was Mary Marcos reporting. And because of the success of movies like Jaws, sharks are pretty well known members of the animal kingdom. There are a number of facts about the species you may su be surprised about. The federal government has a few of them listed. One, sharks do not have bones. Most sharks have good eyesight, so don't, don't think you can hide. Not all sharks have the same teeth. Scientists age sharks by counting the rings on their vertebrae. Blue sharks are actually blue, and sharks can go into a trance. Yes, I've heard that part before. But how? Yeah, they just kind of like Space cruise. Out. It's like floating underwater almost. If you have a question about sharks or any other topic we are discussing at 7 o'clock, just reach out to us. Use the email address on your screen. It's boston.question at nbcuni.com.